I'm David Levin, and this is Pop Goes the Culture, behind-the-scenes stories and anecdotes of your favorite TV shows from the stars who were there. Today, the final part of my interview with Rue McClanahan. She'll tell us how they made the transition from Golden Girls to Golden Palace, how she liked living in New Jersey. She'll compare New York to Los Angeles and how she got her name. Now, the hotel is very interesting. Could you sort of walk me through the process of how the Golden Girls became Golden Palace? Sure. Um, B kind of got tired of doing Golden Girls along about the third year, fourth year, fifth year. Six years she'd had it. She wasn't going to renew for the seventh. When you sign a contract like a sitcom contract out there, you sign for six years. Then they pick you up for a seventh. Well, she wasn't going to do it, but she did it. They coerced her in some way. And, uh, but seven was it. So they marry her off to Blanche's uncle. And Blanche... Well, they just say goodbye to her at the end of the at the end of, of the show of the Golden Girls last episode. But uh, Paul and Tony came to us and said they had a meeting in their office with the three of us, uh, Estelle and Betty and me, and said uh, we're thinking of starting a new a spinoff called the Golden Palace, where Blanche sells her house and <clears throat> I'm going to have Would to get like a drink. Water, please. Yeah. She sells her house and buys this old, decrepit hotel downtown Miami, the Golden Palace, and they run it. And we'd like to do it with the three of you and a couple of men. <coughs> and they hired the wonderful Don Cheadle, who was unknown, and of course who was not planning a career in comedy, but he was so good as the desk clerk, and desk clerk, and they hired um, Cheech Marin as the temperamental chef, and it was really fun working with men weekly and having that balance. I would have preferred if they'd uh, replaced B with another door with another roommate. Um, there were really lots of wonderful character actresses. But they chose to go this way. Maybe they wanted a new show. They changed the time and the date, and I mean the day of the week, we, and the network. We went from NBC Saturday nights at 9, which people have been watching for seven years, to CBS Monday nights at 8 without telling anybody. Right. There wasn't enough publicity about any of that. Many people said, I never heard of Golden Palace. So I'm so glad that Lifetime's about to put it on and run it for the first time since 1993. Wow. Now, you told me earlier about your autobiography. I'm writing my autobiography. It's, the title of it is My First Five Husbands. It does not include the man I'm married to now because he deserves a book all his own. So my first five husbands really run through all of my professional life up to 19... Hmm. Hmm. Well, I also say my first five husbands and the ones who got away. So in counting the ones who got away, it runs up through the mid-90s. Yeah, so, you know, it's most of... it's. It's Hollywood, and it's New York, and then it's Hollywood again. It's, it's all my working in New York. It's all my working in Hollywood, and all the men. Well, most of them. I don't have room for all of them. And close to New Jersey. And closer. <laughs> I lived in Fort Lee for three years. I live there now. But, what? I live there now. Oh, I lived on the corner of Edwin and something, just blocks from the bridge. That's not far from me. It was a quiet neighborhood. Mm -hmm. My son could ride his bicycle up and down the streets, little dog running along with him. It was a real nice idea. I mean, it was a good choice to move from Manhattan into 
uh, into New Jersey in 1969. There'd been a burglary in our apart in our apartment building, and my son was only ten, and he was he said too old for babysitters. So I felt nervous. He was staying home by himself while I was doing uh, the Broadway play Jimmy Shine with Dustin Hoffman, right. and uh, and then he and his friend Philip were held up in the park. I mean, held up not with guns, but accosted by some older boys and robbed. And that was on either Easter Sunday or Mother's Day, because I remember thinking, on a Sunday, on the east side, these little boys get robbed. They're 10 years old. So I said, I'm moving out of here. This is supposed to be a safe neighborhood. I'm going to a really safe neighborhood. And I found Fort Lee. Is it still sweet? It's still sweet. You know, that's where Hollywood originally was. That's right. It is. I, my, my apartment building is built on the corner of what was the original Universal Studio. Oh, my Lord. So I'm on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I prefer New York City vastly to Los Angeles. New York City is my pace, and it's my mix-it-up style. Just get to see people on the street. I can step out of my apartment and see something that's funny every day. See something that makes me laugh. Well, you step out of your apartment or your house in New York, in LA, and you get into your car. That's not very funny. Yeah. You have to drive 45 minutes to get anywhere. I, I just found it one of the loneliest places I'd ever lived. Yeah, it's a little more exciting over here. Exciting. It, this, is the, this is the center of the universe, my dear. We are ancient Rome for our time. You were. This is the center. We are a international city. We're the international city in, in the States. I heard that the other day. I like it, so you I'm were, quoting it. You were, you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> Ruth, thank you so much. Paula mentioned one, one story that you said you wanted to tell of how you got your name. My Aunt Winona convinced my mother... <clears throat> When mother was pregnant, Aunt Winona was my father's sister. Her name was Winona Sue. My father's name was William Edwin, and my mother's name was Drita Ruinell, if you please. So she convinced mother that she'd let her name her first child. She'd let someone else name her first child. Oh, how could she do that? So mother said, okay, if I can name your first child. They said, all right, but she wasn't pregnant. So uh, when I was born, I was a girl. I don't know what she picked. You know, I have to call Aunt Monona and ask her, what was she going to name me if I was a boy? Maybe she was still going to name me Eddie Rue. I don't know. But it was spelled E-D-D-I hyphen R-U-E, Eddie Rue. And I was Eddie Rue until I was 21, and a boy in college said, if you're going off to your first job to act, you've got to change your name. And I said, I've been thinking about it for years, Jerry, but I can't find any other last name to go with Eddie Rue? He said, that's not the problem. It's the Eddie. He said, drop it and become Rue McClanahan. Well, I hadn't had such a thought. Now, my, my Aunt Monona had a girl a year and a half after Mother had me, and Mother got to name her. Monona Sue was married to Earl, and Mother named that child Earl Sue. Tell them I'll be right there. Okay. Earla Sue. So she dropped the Earla when she was 14. She had a little bit more savvy than I did, but she became Sue. And I like being Rue. It's a good name. You know, my most recent, before the current secretary, told me after she'd worked for me a year, that both her father and her brother were named Rue. Isn't that interesting? But it works for both men and women, doesn't it? And so does Eddie, I guess. So does Eddie, I guess. I was. I did get a draft notice when I was 18. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. Uh, that's, that's the capper. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're that welcome. Was wonderful. Well, that's my interview with Rue McClanahan, one of the great character actresses of the small and large screen. I'm David Levin. 
Until next time, please leave me your comments. Let me know what you think of the show. I read every single one. And if you can't watch our video version, you can listen to our upcoming podcast. And if you're listening to our podcast, you can watch us on YouTube at Pop Goes the Culture TV. Please subscribe. Please follow Pop Goes the Culture on Twitter, Pop Go, at Pop Go Culture, Facebook, or email me at popgoestheculturetv at gmail.com. And please subscribe to our Patreon campaign. Just a buck or two from you can help me keep doing these shows. And for three bucks, you'll get a chance to be on our live sister show, Ask Them Yourself. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time.